All right, so I'm just going to go over like a few pairs and what my prediction is for like obviously the coming week. But before that, uh, I'm going to quickly just show you um, what we kind of saw. What we kind of saw last week. So um, I think someone pointed this out on Friday. We had obviously this kind of like a, this corrective wave over here. So long term, not long term, I mean like over the course of like the last few weeks, price was obviously downtrending. And then we had like, um, obviously I, I, I was teaching you guys about market structure. So we had this, um, this BOS over here and another break of structure over here. But really and truly, none of this will matter until we start breaking these structure levels over here. For example, this and this. Now what we saw, right? was we actually did come and purge this high here but if we um yeah um Kav I think he's gonna try now so if we look here we literally just wicked this high and just plummeted right and when we dropped we also took out this low here and this low here now, if any of you have watched the um, wait, Dab, Dab, are you sharing your screen? Oh, am I not? Oh boy! <laughs> give me a sec. Give me a sec. Yeah. I've just been recording my screen. Oh, my bad, my bad. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, boom. Oh wait, Cav, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to make me host. I can't share my screen for some reason. Host disabled. Admit. Alright, hold on. Uh, boom. Can you guys all see it now, yeah? Yeah, now it's perfect. Alright, wicked, wicked. <laughs> you guys are just sitting in silence. <laughs> what should we? <laughs> Alright, cool, wicked. I was just saying we obviously had a downtrend for like the past couple of weeks. You can you can clearly see this. It doesn't need to be charted up, right? And then our uh, our realistic realistically our last structure point was this over here, right? Because anything that happened in here doesn't really matter until we start breaking these highs above here. Now what we saw was we saw price come up. We wicked it, and then we dropped. So we didn't really have cooperation above this high over here. Like, we didn't have, if we had, like, nice, um, let me, we had nice candle closures above, right? Like this, we kind of consolidated for a bit. Then, like, maybe this would have been worth, like, looking for another buy because we're obviously respecting this uptrending structure over here. But we didn't really have any of that. So I was, like, skeptical about longing this. Not even that, just because of, like, previous long-term like macro direction to the downside so what I ended up identifying was that this was just to purge any liquidity of what that was above here and we actually came in to fill this inefficiency to the top so uh, if you guys identify that and you took this trade over here this would have been a nice what is this Above the high, that's like a four pip stop loss, and then this ran all the way down here. That would have been a nice thirty-two percent trade. I mean, you could have you could have kept that running too because um, now I'm going to go into also this week as well. What we had here, right? We kind of had the same setup, so I think it was on the two minute. Yeah, so here we kind of had the same setup. We saw price coming back down, right? We wicked this high over here, so it's literally the same thing as here. We wicked the high, but we didn't have cooperation. We didn't have any candle closures above. Like normally, when you when you have a break of, I think someone's trying to. Give me a sec. 
So we wicked this high over here, and it's literally the exact same setup. We had this inefficiency here get filled. I think it was a 50. Or let me just uh, draw it out here. We had this here get filled, yeah. and then we literally ran to the downside. And you could have taken, you could have taken it the same way. I mean, you already had your downside confirmation, so not seeing how, like, seeing the uh, price not cooperate with the break of structure would have given you your, um, your, your validation that okay, cool, we're gonna go to the downside. And look, we just literally plummeted. Now the setup I was looking for was this. Uh, I think it was the five minute. Yeah, I was looking for this inefficiency fill over here. Over here. Right. I was looking for price to come fill this in. It literally lined up with like previous structure. There was like, like everything was like perfect. But when I was looking, when price was approaching that region, we we didn't have any breaks of structure to the downside. Like look look at look at this price action over here. Literally I mean I wouldn't consider that break of structure that we literally just purged that low and ran. Like no breaks of structure to the downside, literally no no indication that we're looking to reverse. So I didn't really take that. I mean I didn't take that. I stayed I stayed off it. Plus it was literally the end of Friday, so like I wasn't expecting a move to play out. But going to the four minute, what I ended up seeing was we did pretty much the same move to this high over here so we had this high get taken out we didn't have any candle closures above but we did have like sluggish price action over here like we kind of did consolidate so i'm on the fence with like either calling this corporation or no corporation because we also tapped the inefficiency here i mean just about Yeah. So leading into this week, I mean, if if the market gaps and like hopefully the gap isn't too crazy, but if we see a nice break of structure below here, if we close above this like pretty nicely, what I'd kind of look for is this. Obviously, following Price's narrative, I'd look to hopefully take a trade off of this candle here that mitigated the um, the inefficiency over here because that way we'll also take this high over here by the way sorry if you guys have like hear a lot of background noise I got like guests over um, yeah so if we if we come up into the if we close below here to show a nice brick of structure and like some sign of weakness to the downside or we come up and we take this high we mitigate out of this 50 and we reject off it and that could potentially be a really nice setup I would I would look for that and we also had like equal highs get taken out here I mean yeah pretty much equal highs here we saw that get taken out so that's uh that's my bias for the week if we don't see that what I'm going to be looking for is this uh where was it where was it where was it I think it was a 15. Uh, 10. Hmm. I mean, this obviously this is looking pretty corrective. So, where was it? Let me go higher. This kind of over here. We could see this candle get mitigated. And that's because obviously we this is the candle that came up and we that's where we tapped the previous inefficiency taking out this high. So if price would like to come back up and add orders above here, then um I would it would be probably it would be quite probable, but as I said, this is this is kind of what I'm looking at right now. I'd like to see this play out more than this um this candle being tapped. It just seems kind of more realistic to be honest. But again, I'll obviously I'll keep you guys updated with this. I'll I'll send chart ups in the in the Telegram group when market opens. But I'm gonna quickly go into this um, this chart up as well. So 
uh, let's just zoom in, right? We had price come up and it tapped something where where this where this red line is because it literally just had a sharp reaction away from it. So what we do is this is GBP USD by the way. I'm pretty sure I sent this in the chat. So whoever took their time out to go look at that would have seen that over here. Let me just um, replay this. Right, over here what we had was, I think it was a two minute, yeah, two minute, we had the smallest inefficiency right here. Can you see this within this little gap here? We had the smallest inefficiency, so I'm going to mark this out here, and here. So within this little gap we had inefficient price action, which also lined up with the open of this candle perfectly there, right? So we have like, obviously we, we didn't come below these lows to take something out, so obviously this price action here mitigated something in this price action here. So obviously following the narrative, we know at some point we're probably going to come down here to mitigate this inefficiency and this open of the, of the candle. So exiting replay, what we saw was we literally came in and we tapped the open of the candle perfectly. Now, you wouldn't want to take a trade off of the open of the candle because you don't know you're going to have a reaction there. Otherwise, you're literally going to be guessing the tops or the bottoms. You're going to be like, oh, this candle or this candle or this inefficiency. And you're literally just going to be continuously guessing. So what we did here was <clears throat> we go to the lower time frame after we had our rejection. We saw that we broke structure to the upside. So if we go to the, let's say the one minute. Yep, we broke structure to the upside and then we came back down and I think it was a five minute inefficiency. Let me zoom in. All right, here. Let me delete all of this make it make sense for you Just draw it out from the beginning so we had price come up right we broke structure over here to the upside to confirm our our um, our uptrend our new uptrend right we had this inefficiency here tapped and um, what we also had was so from this bottom to this top here right like so we had price come back into a discounted market. So you see how the 50% the of the swing and the 50% of the inefficiency line up. So now you've got two confluences that line up in the same region. So you're looking for a, a reactive region here, right? So that, that should give you your confirmation to take these trades. Like this is, this is kind of what you're looking for. You would have had your stop loss above it. Sorry, that's just my little brother screaming. Um, you had your stop loss just above the candle. I mean, if you go to the four minute, just above this candle over here, let's just say 5.2 pips for now. Let's say you took, if you guys have seen the external range liquidity video, stop loss above this high here. Boom. You could have taken a nice 15% trade there. And even if you took half off, so bagged what? Let's say 7.5%. And let the rest run target this high here and then I, f I, s I still think this is going to run to the upside because of this so i hope this will make sense if it doesn't just uh, message that me in the drop a message in the chat here now so i can see still makes sense yeah all right here's my prediction for the coming week we obviously got inefficient price action within here, this is on the higher time frame, and within here. But to be honest, yeah, this is quite, this has some strong momentum, right? We've also mitigated this inefficiency over here. We've kind of respected that. We, we actually went back and saw what we respected in the past. So following Price's story, we've respected this inefficient, inefficiency over here. 
we've come back up and respected this I'd like to see price break this high here before coming down lower and maybe mitigating out of one of these inefficiencies to be honest I'm going for the lower one simply because it's in a more discounted market so if it goes down try find a more accurate point of interest uh, 40 minute see these are just consecutive bullish candles like This is quite weird. I've never seen something like this. See, I'd probably go for this uh, inefficient price action over here. Again, this is just going to be my point of interest. It doesn't mean I'm going to take the trade here. It just means... Boom. So this here is not only inefficient price action, but it lines up with previous market structure. So it kind of has that like that support that like that support to come here and for bigger players to like to probably add positions and move this higher right so this is kind of more probable than any any of these inefficiencies up here and let's go to the higher time frame and see how this lines up I mean nothing really here mm. We the fifty percent lines up with the with the fulfillment of the thirty minute. So again, you could pretty much mark out every single like inefficiency and thing and see when you get your lower time frame point of interest. But what you're kind of what you kind of want to do is line up your confluences. So you see how this ineff inefficiency feel the fulfillment is also the fifty percent of um whatever what time frame were we on fifteen. 10. What time frame was it? Yep, the uh, 7 minutes. So, to be honest, besides that, I'm not really looking at anything else. Um, if you guys want me to look at something, uh, let me know now. I'll just quickly see if I can go for it. Potential GJ setup. I mean, I went through. This was the potential GJ setup. So we've obviously taken this high here. We've seen some rejection. I mean, to be honest, we didn't really have like. Let me show you this here. Yeah? When when we broke structure here. Here to the upside. You see how we have candle closures above. Like this is a break of structure here. We got candle closures where this is this is price literally showing us we're willing to close above and move higher, right? And even though yeah, sure, macro direction was wrong because we we're going to the downside. Just looking at break of structure and how it happens, that's not that's not what we're seeing here. When we broke this structure here, that's this isn't what we're seeing. We're not seeing a nice strong candle closure above to indicate like a willingness to go higher so to be honest again to be honest i don't really like um analyzing on um on the weekend simply because like the when the market's open tonight the the gaps just always mess up your analysis like you're going to be looking for like a a short position and like the market will like open somewhere up here and it would just be completely pointless but it's not i mean you're just gonna have to do it anyways this is the setup I'm looking for here. This is the potential setup. Take out this um take out this candle to the upside, right? But mitigate the candle that tapped the inefficiency. So this is gonna be the region I'm looking to take the position here. <laughs> what was that? This is a candle I'm going to be looking to take the position of the from from the fifty to the. To be honest, the fifty looks good. I feel like we'll probably wick it and then return to the downside. If we do this in market open though, like if this move happens tonight, then 
I'm not going to be that willing to take it just because of spreads. But again, like we got a whole week of opportunities ahead of us, so I'm not going to rush. I'm not going to rush into any trades. But yeah, that's that's basically my GJ setup. Cause um, if you go to the daily time frame, you saw that we respected. First, like first of all, let's go to the weekly close. So this week, look, re like Doji rejection candle, right? We're not looking to go to the upside anymore, in my opinion. Tapped fulfillment of that inefficiency, and actually rejected this strongly to the downside. If you go to the daily, literally same thing: Doji candle, uh, hammers, bearish candle. Again, another like. We got some we got some form of like rejection to the downside here in my opinion. And I feel like this is probably gonna be be the week we're gonna be targeting these lows here. I mean to be honest that's that's a good couple hundred pips, but yeah. I feel like that's that's gonna be the move. Mm, I don't realistically I mean seeing this come up here, this is a nice lacuna here, but I don't really see this uptrending that far up. I feel like we're just gonna melt off. But yeah, we'll see. Remember, we're we're just gonna like we're, we're teaching you to be like professional reactors to the market. You want to see what happens and react um, very well and very precisely. So uh, I'm gonna be sending obviously this week because I launched the whole platform and stuff. I didn't really have a lot of time to like send um, chart ups and ideas and stuff through. But obviously, into the coming weeks, I'm gonna be doing that more. Also, just a uh, quick little update i want to be move i want to move the telegram chat to discord so if those of you who don't know what discord is it's basically like telegram but like it's a bit better because you can i can screen share from there we can have like different rooms where i can like put different information in there for you so i know uh, one of you asked me to do like a glossary of all the keywords like what inefficiency means what an imbalance means so that will be in like a little in like a little room there'll be different rooms for like pdfs links for videos and all of that stuff but um uh, i'm just going to create it all and closer to that time i'm gonna um what's it called i'm gonna i'm gonna get onto a zoom call and basically show you guys a tutorial on like kind of how to use it but yeah like in like a few weeks i'm gonna i'm gonna try to move the chat there because i feel like it'll be more beneficial for you guys because when, when we send stuff to the Telegram chat, it will basically get lost. Like, no one's really going to, like, try to go back and, like, find that link to something. But if it's all nicely organized within Discord, I feel like it'll be, it'll be a better benefit to you. <sighs> Let me just stop recording because I've been going on for time.